The White House's executive order on customer experience asks agencies to provide excellent, equitable, and secure federal services to the American taxpayer. A new report by Forrester Research shows that the results of federal customer experience in 2021 have been mixed. Rick Parrish is vice president and principal analyst at Forrester Research. Rick, welcome to the program. Thanks, good to be here. So there's good news and bad news in the report. Let's start with the good. There have been improvements in the federal agencies and programs that you rated. What were they? Yes, there have been improvements. In fact, uh, when we rate 15 of the largest public facing US federal agencies and programs, we measure their quality of the customer experience or, or CX that they provide on a 100 point scale. And we've seen now two years in a row of improvement up to this year's score of 62.6, a 1.5 improvement last year, 1.6 improvement the year before that. So good news, things are moving up. However, of course, on a 100 point scale, 62.6 still leaves plenty of room for improvement. That's like a D grade if you were uh, getting a grade for that. So, I mean, it, it still lags behind the private sector. What's going on? It does. It lags about uh, 10.7 points behind the private sector, which we also rate on the uh, on the CX index. And of course, there are there are there are legitimate reasons for this. First of all, uh, government organizations around the world have been slower than the public sector to understand the benefits to themselves of improving the quality of the customer experience. And also government organizations tend to uh, be larger. They tend to have some additional regulatory hurdles, although it's easy for government leaders to overstate uh, how much their hands are tied by those regulatory hurdles. Uh, but some of them do exist. So there, are, so there are some factors. Things are moving in the right direction. In fact, if the private sector had stayed where it was back in 2015 in terms of CX quality, the federal government would be about middle of the pack right now, above airlines, above health insurers, organizations like that. But of course, many companies in the private sector are getting better, which means that even though the U.S. federal government is improving, it remains behind. So what variables did you measure for this report and how did you decide which variables would be most important to consider? Sure. Uh, we measured, uh, in essence, three sets of variables. First, what we call the three dimensions or three E's of CX quality, the effectiveness of the experience, the ease of the experience, and the emotional quality of the experience. And by the way, our data shows that the emotional quality, that third E, is more important than ease or effectiveness. But so that's one set of variables, ease, effectiveness, emotional quality of the experience. Another set of variables we measured was uh, the drivers of CX quality. We measure 47 different factors, everything from uh, do, does the agency have convenient office hours to is the website easy to navigate, all kinds of things. So we measure that set. And then the third set of variables we measure is, is how the quality of the customer experience evokes certain behaviors in customers. Now, I realize that that's uh, not something we're used to thinking about, but as I said a minute ago, government organizations have to realize that there is a self-interested reason for improving the quality of the customer experience, just like companies in the private sector did years ago. And that self-interest is that it drives mission performance. And so the goal of improving the customer experience in government isn't just to get people to like you. It's to, it's to evoke behaviors that are good for them and good for you. Like for instance, uh, if you have a government organization that has authoritative information, about say uh, a pandemic <laughs> or a federal program or taxes. Do you want them going to you for that information? Or do you want them asking random people on social media? You want them asking you. Our data shows that a better customer experience evokes that behavior. Or if you're a regulatory agency, part of your mission success is getting people to do what you ask of them. And again, our data shows that improving the quality of the customer experience in the right ways will drive that behavior. So those are the three sets of variables, variables that understand how good CX is for federal customers, how good CX is for uh, federal agencies and the drivers that make that all possible. You know, agencies are now required to measure equity factors in their customer experience based on the new White House executive order. I want to first ask you about the difference between in the experience between men and women. 
Uh, sure. It's uh, relatively modest, although real. On, on our 100 point scale, we see uh, about a three point difference, 3.3 points difference between the CX quality for uh, men uh, and women uh, across government on average. Now, there's some agencies where it's a little higher, some where it's a little, little lower, but it's actually the most modest difference uh, of the uh, various demographic categories we studied. There's also uh, big differences in, um, in other things like diversity, age. Um, the older you are, the better experience you have. It, I guess everything starts to deteriorate as you get younger. Uh, yes, in, in fact, in age, that's where we saw the biggest disparity uh, in the quality of the federal customer experience on average. So for members of the silent generation, that's people born in 1945 or before, they have the best experience on average with the federal government versus those members of Gen Z, the youngest adult Americans, who have uh, the weakest experience by a difference of 18 points. That's again on our 100 point scale. So an 18 point difference on that scale uh, is, is vast. And there are other differences uh, as well. For instance, uh, race and ethnicity is nearly as large a disparity. It's a 16 point difference between people who identify as white or Caucasian, who have the best experiences on average, and among the 15 agencies and programs we study, pretty much every single one of them, it's white or Caucasian, have the best, uh, versus on average, people who identify as native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander have the weakest experience, again, by a gap of on average uh, 16 points. However, there's, there's one other difference I'd, I'd like to point out, which I think is the most surprising difference. It's not the biggest difference, but it is, I think, the most, the most unexpected. And that is veteran status. There is a nine point gap between when we, when we uh, analyze our data by veteran status, a nine point gap between people who have the best federal customer experiences and the poorest. And the people who have the best are active duty military. But the people who have the poorest are the non-spousal dependents of active duty military or veterans. Essentially, they're adult children, but of course, there are other ways of being a non-spousal dependent of, of, a, of a veteran or active duty service member. But on average, we're talking about their adult kids. And I think that's a, that's, a, that's a surprising finding that I think warrants a lot of research, especially for organizations like TRICARE, the Department of Veterans Affairs, where we see that disparity repeated. Uh, the, the active duty service members have the best experience. Their non-spousal dependents have the poorest. I didn't expect that. I don't think a lot of people expected that. All right. Well, Rick, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you so much for being on the program. Great to be here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.